everyone, I'm Helen and uh, I am so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I know some of us are really wondering what are we gonna do with all this time on our hands, right? But don't you worry because there's a lot of things that we can do and a lot of things that we can appreciate, um, especially now that we have so much time to do it. Now, you guys know that I'm a science teacher, so we're gonna be doing a little uh, fun uh, science project today. But first, let me tell you a little background of what we're gonna do. Now, how many of you guys, uh, you know, have eyes as you're watching this? I hope you do, right? Because you're watching the video. Did you know that God created our eyes to be such an amazing machine? Um, and it's so intricate. And if you've ever learned anything about the eyeball, you know that it, it kind of looks like a marble, right? And it's, the, the eyeball's really round and it can reflect light. Um, and if you're even familiar with more details, there are things like rods and cones that help us see black and white as well as colors. Now today, I wanna talk to you a little bit more about the eye. Um, it's gonna be a little something called persistence in vision. Now this is, um, might be new to a lot of you, but the concept or our experience with it is definitely not new. If you've ever seen a movie, especially even an old fashioned movie, you'll know that um, persistence in vision is what helps us or enables us to see a continuous picture. And did you know that when we're watching a movie, especially cartoons, it's done frame by frame. That means the first picture is slightly different from the second, and it's slightly different from the third and the fourth and so on. And what happens is when it gets played really fast, um, we see a moving picture. So how does that happen? Why don't we just see a picture and then a moving picture and then a moving picture, but why does it look like it's really smooth? Well, it's thanks to this concept called persistence in vision. Our eyeballs, when it processes information, so when we look at something, um, the image actually stays in our brain for about 1 30th of a second. That's really, really short, but it's long enough for our brains to hold that picture until we see and process the next one. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how it works. We're gonna make something called a thaumatrope, all right? And all we need are a couple of index cards. Oh no, I don't have index cards at home. That's okay. Um, if you have maybe a cardboard box or a cereal box, you can cut them into little rectangles or squares. We want something a little stiffer um, to make our thaumatrope uh, work a little bit better. So I'm gonna take my two index cards and on one of them, I'm gonna draw a picture of a goldfish. So if you need a little more time drawing your goldfish, feel free to pause the video, or we can just draw it together right now. And it's okay, you don't have to be an amazing artist because I'm not an artist. I'm gonna draw something that looks like a goldfish. All right. That's not a goldfish, but close enough. And if you wanna color it and make it really pretty, you can do that too. On my other index card, I'm gonna draw a fish bowl because my goldfish needs a place to live, right? So I'm gonna draw a big fish bowl to make sure the goldfish can actually fit inside, all right? All right, can we pretend that that's even and that looks really nice? Okay, good. All right, now our next step is we're gonna take a pencil. I hope you guys have a pencil at home or if you don't have a pencil, a chopstick would work just fine. So I'm gonna take this index card or these index cards back to back like this, okay? I'm just gonna take some tape
All right, there's one piece. And the other piece, this is gonna be a little tricky. I'm just gonna tape it to the first index card. All right. And after you've done that, your very first Thaumatrope is done! We'll do with this. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We talked about persistence and vision, right? So that means as you're looking at this picture of the goldfish, it's gonna stay in your head for about 1 30th of a second. Now, I'm gonna turn this really, really quickly to the other side so you can see the fishbowl. And that's gonna stay in your head for about 1 30th of a second. And if I do that again and again and again and again, guess where the goldfish is gonna end up? So you guys ready? All right, here we go. I really hope this works. Whoa! I hope this is showing up in the video. Yay! So you can see that your goldfish ended up inside the fishbowl. Now, here's my challenge to you. Can you think of other things that you can draw to make another thaumatrope or maybe even five more thaumatropes? Let me give you another idea. <gasps> How about a bird in a cage? And it doesn't even have to be animals. Another fun one that I also thought about on my way here, <gasps> you can draw an empty french fry box on one side and your real french fries on the other side and make it fill up the box. So have a lot of fun with this. And after you're done with your original thaumatropes, why don't you uh, take a picture or a video of it and post it in the comments. I'd love to see them. And I know everybody else here at Help You Learn would love to see your creativity too. All right, until next time, remember to wash your hands and get a lot of rest. All right, see you guys soon. Bye.